be sure to select the telephone option, use a dial-in number, access code to complete the connection. This webinar is being recorded and you will be able to access the full webinar as well as the PowerPoint slides on the BTRG's website at www.btrgroup.com slash data webinar. More information on accessing this materials will be provided in an email following the presentation. So let me take a moment to introduce our webinar speaker. Our presenter for this presentation will be Ross Clark. Ross is the Information Lifecycle Governance Specialist at BTRG. Ross specializes in information management, information lifecycle governance, and enterprise content management. He also focuses on bringing the best data governance solutions and services available in the market. As I mentioned earlier, um, our presentation will be focused on building an effective data governance strategy by leveraging best practices and proven technologies in order to unlock big data to create value. So before I turn it to Ross to discuss best practices and best tips, um, I'd like to provide um, a very brief overview of what big data is. So lately, there has been um, a significant discussion around um, the, the value of big data, but most companies um, fail to have a clear understanding of the problem hidden in it. Big data analytics um, and big initiatives will cost as much as 20 times higher relative to software purchase. So companies are implementing big data analytics to, to increase their understanding of business operations. So the belief is that big data technologies alone will, will bring greater business value. However, we might get business value, but we are, we are addressing the symptoms and not the underlying problem. So a key to approaching big data is to separate the volume problem for, from the actual cap capabilities found in big data solutions. So as you can see, as the data ages, it, it loses its value, but the cost and the risk course rise over time. So what we need to do is we need to clean out our data debris first to supercharge and future-proof big data initiatives. So if we're, in order to get our big data success, big data governance is required. So over the next 30 minutes, you learn what exactly is a, a big data governance strategy, why we need to develop an effective complete strategy, and actually concrete initial steps to build your data governance strategy. So I want to take um, a moment to launch a poll. I really appreciate if everyone can go ahead and answer that. So our question is, what is the most challenging issue you are facing when starting your data governance program? Okay, I'll give you um, about 20 more seconds to answer. Thank you very much. Um, I'll go ahead and close the poll. All right, let's see the results now. And Desi, there, there seems to be an issue with sharing the results, so um, I'll just jump in okay. and say that we have sure. the, mm -hmm. a large majority um, here came in with the reluctance to designate decision rights, and uh, that is not uncommon, and that's something that I'll actually touch upon. So um, sorry about the, the technical issue there, but um, I'll, I'll let you know that that is the majority is letter A, reluctance to designate decision rights. Thank you very much, Russ. Um, and I actually will turn it back to you um, to take a deeper dive into big data governance. So take it away, Ross. Thanks, Desi. So, you know, we wanted to start off by just talking about kind of a, what is data governance and the definitions that, uh, you know, are out there. And these two definitions that we're going to talk about are definitely part of it. And then I'd like to share with you our BT, P, BTRG spin and, and kind of viewpoint. So the first kind of basic overview is that data governance is the convergence of data quality, data management, data policies, business process management, and risk management surrounding the handling of data in an organization, which it certainly is. 
Um, the one that we hear probably more often is, is this, and it's, it breaks it down a little even simpler than that. It's the people, processes, and technology brought together to organize a organization's data. So, you know, we have the people, the right people, the right process, and the right solutions, and that is the data governance. So these are the two that we, we typically hear when we talk to uh, people who are implementing a data governance program. Now, the BTRG view is a little bit different. We, you know, we definitely encompasses those aspects, but the first thing that we want to make sure when we're talking about a data governance program is that our clients see the incredible cost savings that are available. Um, you know, you won't only dramatically improve the processing, but we'll fund new initiatives. So really our viewpoint is, yes, let's create this program, but let's do it to fund new programs and initiatives and further dive deeper into your data management. So we're also going to ensure that you get the most from big data and, and drive the insights and high quality analytics. And kind of an analogy I like to use is, you know, if you buy a new house with a great huge basement and that's where you're going to store all your things, you know, you want to clear it out first and you want to make sure you're only keeping the the stuff and the boxes that has value to you. So that's what we want to do for for your systems and your uh, your organization. We don't want to hold on to and use big data to analyze data that that doesn't make sense uh, to, to analyze anymore. You want to get the most out of what you're bringing to the table. So data governance also will solve the problem of data growth because what we're going to be doing is archiving and retiring um, data that unused data that you no longer need and put in a policy that does this. And while we're doing that, we're going to ensure that the data is secured and protected. Um, and kind of our mantra for data governance strategy is think big, start small and act fast. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but really what we mean by that is think enterprise organization wide, big overview, but start with small projects that are manageable. You can get quick wins and, uh, and really see quick improvements on uh, performance, manage risk and, uh, and data storage and costs. So, and act fast because data is growing every day. So why data governance? You know, why do we, why do we see this trend of organizations implementing programs? Um, you know, here are a couple of reasons. So they want, they want to increase consistency and confidence in decision making. So again, they want that high value data. They don't want the old data. Um, they want to find storage savings, increase system performance, decreasing the risk of regulatory fines from, you know, we work with a lot of healthcare. So HIPAA is a big one on that one. HIPAA just released uh, some new terms and in, in, in the way that they, uh, they, they regulate fines. So that's a big one for us. Improving data security, maximizing the income generation of data. Again, that's going back to getting the most out of your big data. Designating accountability, better planning, minimizing or eliminating rework, optimizing staff effectiveness. But really what we see at the, the base of a lot of these issues and why companies are doing this is because of data overload. I mean, if we take a quick look, storage savings, that's a problem caused by data overload. System performance can be caused by data overload. Inconsistencies in, in data and decision making can be because of data overload. If you're using old data, you're not going to get the best decisions out of it. Um, staff effectiveness, rework, a lot of these all come back to data overload. So that is what we are trying to fix. And that's where we're going to start with our data strategy, our data governance strategy. And what you see here, this is a, uh, it's a little bit of a confusing graph, but mainly what I want you to take a look at is this area here. These are all the, the data that a business brings in. And as you see, they all have high business value from the start. And some like here, messaging, that drops off pretty quickly. Office docs drops off pretty quickly. So as you come along over time, the cost to value gap really starts to get to get wide here. After about four years, a lot of this information does not have very much business value, but it's still costing you the same. Now, after a couple more years, the cost may drop a little bit. You may tier your storage. Um, you may archive a little bit, but it's never going to catch up to down here to the, the cost of, of keeping that and the risk, um, because as you see over time, the business value drops, the cost kind of stays the same, and the risk increases because the longer you keep data, the more risk, the more data you have that's available for for risk, and uh, 
you know, legal issues and, and hacking and security. So we really what we want to do is, is find the spot in here where we can start creating a policy to delete and archive and secure the data. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit uh, more closely in a little bit. So some of our clients, what we've seen for drivers of data governance strategy, again, external regulations, this is a big one. They need to meet the regulations or audits. They want to make the better business decisions. They're looking for managed risk and security. They're looking to save on storage funds or management. They're looking for a better ROI on data analysis. And they're looking for help in their e-discovery. And this is one that I think kind of um, goes overlooked a lot of times is that the e-discovery piece of data governance is very important. So that's one of the stakeholders that you want involved in your data governance council um, because they're, you're going to make their job so much easier and so much more efficient if you have the data they need and they have easy access to it. But again, the main driver that we see under all of this is that you can save millions. I mean, it's really amazing how much money you can save if you install this data governance strategy and then follow through with it. And you know, we'll talk a little bit about um, why certain companies don't follow through with it, even though they have a data governance strategy. So that's kind of where BTRG comes into play. We can walk you through a blueprint of how to get from point A to point Z and really get to the saving part of it. So we're going to just launch another quick poll here. And it's just, are resources allocated for defining, implementing, and communicating data governance in your organization? I'll give you, you know, about 30 seconds if you could just answer that real quick for us. All right, I'll give you another about five seconds or so here. Okay, so I'll share the results here. It's, it got it working now. So as you can see, 67% of our attendees said yes, 33% said no. And um, that's, you'll see, we have some, a, uh, a survey a little bit later on done by IBM and, and that's about right. It, you know, a lot of organizations do have resources allocated, um, but what we're finding is that it's getting the projects completed and moving ahead with the projects that some, some of our clients have been struggling on. So here it is, here's the IBM survey. And the two points that I wanna point out um, are this first one here. 84% believe that poor data governance cause limited user acceptance, uh, lower productivity, reduced business decision accuracy, and higher total cost of ownership. And while 67, why 67, I'm sorry, 66% have not documented or communicated their program. So what we notice here is that while 84% realize that this is an issue and that data governance can you know cause problems and and can fix problems uh 66 have not documented that program so what i wanted to talk about was you know maybe why they haven't done that and what we see is that they don't necessarily know how to have all the correct stakeholders in play so as you know as an it uh, community we can we can do better than this um to our organizations so now here are a few concrete steps to getting started with a data governance strategy. And this first one is probably the most important and the one that we see our clients struggling with the most. And that's aligning multiple stakeholders throughout legal, records management, business, and IT. Um, there's tremendous savings that can be found from IT and legal. It, this is not just an IT project. The savings opportunities are found on all around. And that's why a data governance strategy is so uh, influential in saving money because it crosses over the silos. And again, that's what we find in most organizations that we work with. They're doing this, but they're doing it in silos. So they're not getting the most out of all of the uh, all of the data governance strategy they're trying to implement. So again, don't just think of this as an IT project. You know, the issue that we see is that um, IT doesn't necessarily want to bring this to the forefront to your C-level executives because they don't want to be the ones who have it on their budget now to have to pay for. So what we've seen our clients even do is bring these stakeholders together and we've seen them go as high as the board of directors to say, listen, we have this opportunity, we have this influx of data and we need to figure out how we're going to pay for this as a complete business unit and not just you know each individual department. Um, so 
once you show them the potential of millions of savings, the, the C-level executives, the board directors, they will listen. And, um, and again, that's something that BTRG can definitely help with. We show uh, we have return on investment calculators and a lot of programs that can really help drive your business value and, uh, and, and make your point. So getting to kind of why you need to bring all these different stakeholders into play. Well, again, it comes back to legal is a big part of this. Um, they want to modernize e-discovery process. So they want precise, reliable legal holds. They want access to the evidence all in one place, collect less, le lower their legal risk and cost, and really just make their e-discovery that much easier and take away the risk of you know, documents that you may have held on for for 15 years that end up you know, in litigation, which if you had an, a strategy in place, you wouldn't have and you know, could save you that, that fine or uh, that lawsuit. Um, IT, they obviously want to dispose and retire of unnecessary data. They're working with a budget. So they want to optimize the storage based on value. They want to lower their cost. Uh, business, they're looking for the best business value. So they want to get the best analytics. So again, you want to get rid of what isn't providing any value anymore and only provide them with the best. So when you, you know, spend the money on your big data solutions, you're only processing that quality data. And finally, records, they want to modernize the retention process. So they want to address electronic information. They want uh, uh, schedules to be automated and, again, lower their legal risk and cost. So like I just said, once you have everyone in the room, what you want to do is, is create and implement this policy. Um, again, we see a lot of times with our clients, they have a data governance council, and that's great. But the struggle it has been to creating and implementing the policy. And a lot of times what we see is that they don't necessarily have all the correct stakeholders in play. Um, so, you know, again, as BTRG, we have a, a playbook basically that we can tell you exactly who needs to be into these meetings and what typically we see needs to be kept. And then from there, you know, the organizations we work with will, will pick and choose, you know, in their opinions, what is best for them. Um, but the challenges that we often see in determining what data uh, needs to be kept or, or deleted is legal hold, what has business value, and the regulatory record keeping. Um, but again, the key is to make sure that everything is connected and do not silo it into different departments because that's how you're really going to generate the most savings. So the, the third step would be to uniformly manage unstructured and structured data. And what I mean by unstructured data is everything you see on the left here. So email, SharePoint server, JPEGs, Word docs, videos, PDFs. Um, so, you know, you want to manage that alongside your structured data. So databases and applications. And uh, really why we want to do this is because the equal management drive greater cost savings. If you're going to do archiving to your database, why not do it to your email? If you're going to secure your you know, if you're going to use test data masking in your databases, but uh, you still have some HR documents that are unprotected and have, uh, you know, people's social security numbers out there, are you really as secure as you could be or you should be? And the answer is probably no. And uh, so that's what we're saying is to basically treat data as data. Um, it, it is what it is. Um, again, you'll get improved analytics and drive the big data value. The more, the more uh, data that you can collect from both sides. Make sure you're securing the data across the enterprise. And that's kind of what I was speaking about with the, if you're going to secure your databases, you need to also secure your email um, and all your HR files that may be scanned and, and sitting on a server somewhere. Um, so, you know, something that we're working with a, a large telecom uh, customer right now. And we brought up the question, you know, how important is the 3G data that you're currently saving and holding on to when you know you're on 4G and you're developing the technology to go past that, you know, how much of this 3G data is really giving you value? And you know, the the answer to that question was really not that much. So if we're even able to archive, let's say 60% of the 3G data, you know, that they've been holding on to, uh, just think about the the amount of storage and and cost savings and better analytics that they're getting from just that one decision and following through with that decision and moving forward to the future and not necessarily sitting on that old data that doesn't really apply to what they're working towards today. So, um, you know, if you're going to do one part of the, the data, the, the application, make sure you, you, you take that policy across the enterprise. 
So number four, coming back to thinking big, starting small, and acting fast. Here are just a couple examples of how you can do that. Um, so retire applications that are no longer used or past versions of current copies. We see a lot of applications that you know are 10 years old but are sitting out there when you know you're already three or four uh, versions ahead of the application. So why not retire that that application and, and get back that quick savings and that that storage cost and that management cost. Um, that that's a big, quick, easy win that you can do. Archive old data that needs to be kept. So again, clean up your data. Um, you know, we can compress usually about 60% of data to um, you know, usually about 90% compression rate. So again, think of that quick win, that quick showing of you know profitability and, and savings um, and return on investment from a project. You know, these are projects that can be done typically, you know, in about four to eight weeks. So you get those quick wins. Manage your test data by providing right-sized non-production copies. And what we mean by this is, again, we'll see production copies uh, being copied up to 10 times for the development and different other aspects throughout the environment. But really, your developers don't need a full production copy of your data to do their job. So what we're saying is figure out how much they need and provide the right amount. And, and while you're doing that, make sure you're doing test data or uh, data masking, because if you're outsourcing that or a consultant has access to that or other people have access to all this data that you're just copying, um, you wanna make sure that they don't have access to the correct or the, uh, the sensitive data. And really, this is, an, this is a really easy security project that you can get done again very quickly um, BTRG actually has a special solution that works in conjunction with an IBM solution and uh, expedites this process. So it's it's a real simple project that uh, you can show a quick win and really up your security very quickly on. So continuing with security for number five, um, you want to establish layers of protection that align cost to value. And you know in the old days it was okay just to kind of put a, a big fence around your fort. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. What we want to do is have varying levels of protection. So we want to protect the environments through data activity, for the, the production environments through data activity monitoring, uh, encryption, user provisioning, and network security. So this would be kind of a, you know, your production data is very sensitive. So we want to have a, a very secure, sophisticated solution to secure it. But your non-production environments, they can go through data masking and redaction uh, through uh, of the data elements. And again, that's you know not quite as a sophisticated security, but in your non-production environments, hopefully that's going to be good enough and um, you'll have some other safeguards in place as well. So number six is really, it kind of seems obvious, but again, it doesn't necessarily always happen because we don't have the right stakeholders in place. And that's just delete the data according to the retention policy. So you get the right people in the room to create the policy, make sure you follow through with it because you're just doing all this work and not gonna see the benefits of it unless you actually push that delete key. And um, and again, what we typically see is that, you know, oh, all of a sudden we have this great council, this data governance council, but they haven't brought in the legal team. So legal says, no, 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 can't delete that. I need that at the last second. So you want to bring them in from the start. Um, and, and that's really what we want to do. And the challenge is that much data is done ad hoc by employees with little or no guidance. So breaking the cycle can be a challenge. Um, and number seven, kind of as an overview, create a program for change. Transform your business into a data management and governance mindset. Bring legal, bring IT, business, records, compliance, and security stakeholders all together. Establish a program which will keep your data lean, cost down, performance high, processes efficient, and big data realizing its full potential. And, you know, I think that's really, this webinar series has been on trends in technology. And the, the overall trend that we see is that data is growing. And with that comes awesome opportunities to get great analytics and drive business value. But before you do that, let's clean out what we already have. And again, you know, I kind of come back to that that cleaning out your basement, you know, before you, you put in this great analytics system of big data, if you're using, you know, Hadoop or another big data, big analytics tool, um, clean out what you have, save some money while you're at it and fund these programs with those savings instead of, uh, you know, getting the analytics from 
poor data and open yourself up to more risk and, and not as great uh, performance. So that's that would be the overall theme, I would say, is data is coming. Clean it up before you can use it. So one more look at this graph that's now changed a little bit because now we've implemented a data governance uh, solution and, and strategy. You'll see here, up here again, all this has business value. So you're going to realize the value and, and use the analytics tools here. After a couple of years, you know, it's not quite as high on the business value. So this is where you might archive or tier your, uh, tier your data to align with the value of, of what you're getting out of it. And then you'll see where the, the gray line here, so the risk and the cost meet up. That's probably going to be about the area where you want to delete. Now, again, this all depends on who you have on your data council. There's certainly going to be items that you're going to end up keeping till, you know, down here, seven to 10 years. But if there are things that can be deleted, this is where we want to start deleting them. And then, you know, as we get out here, this is probably where we can really start finding more and more uh, deletion areas and that we, we don't need to save any more data because, you know, the risk, it just completely outweighs the cost and the, uh, and the benefit, the business value. So one last quick poll, and that's just, does your organization see the need to define and manage disposable of irrelevant data? And I'll just give us a couple of seconds to, to clean this poll. <clears throat> Okay, I'll give you about 10 more seconds here. Okay, so it looks like we're right at 50-50. So again, yeah, some organizations are seeing it and, and some are not. Um, and I guess, you know, that really all depends on what type of organization you are in and the size of your organization. Um, but what I'll say is that any size organization can start a process towards this. It does not have to be a humongous uh, enterprise-wide uh, sweeping change to get started. So how to start thinking big. So keep the organization in, in mind while you're planning it, but start small. So earn those quick wins with projects like email archiving, app retirement, um, you know, test data management, things like that, where you can, again, show those quick wins, bring some money back on the budget for next year and start funding more and more projects. And then as you, as you prove these wins, you'll start to bring uh, other stakeholders on board and you can share your experience. And what we find is that the, the people who bring us into the meetings and we start having these conversations with the important stakeholders, um, we end up making them look like rock stars because they say, you know, they, they point these out, these points out to the C-level executives and they show the savings. And it's like, you know, why have we been working in silos this entire time? Why haven't we followed our own policies that we've already put in place? And that's really it. It just comes down to a lot of times uh, companies have policies that aren't being followed because, you know, they don't have everyone involved. So, again, act fast. And that's just start as soon as possible so you can get the most out of the data that's coming your way. Um, so real quickly, just as we wrap up our, our spring webinar series, um, we want to thank everyone for joining us on this. But uh, BTRG has been around for over 20 years with 250 unique customers across Every single industry you can imagine from healthcare, uh, higher education, uh, telecom, oil and gas, you know, really anything you can think of. We're a uh, premier business partner with IBM and an Oracle Platinum business partner. Uh, we handle the information lifecycle governance. So kind of what we were talking about today is the big picture. Information management, which are those smaller projects that make up ILG. So archive, uh, retire, TDM, privacy and security. And uh, also enterprise content management which is the unstructured. So a lot of the archiving on the unstructured side. So email archiving, uh, file share, SharePoint, items like that. And just to give you a quick overview of some of our customer successes, um, we work with a major consulting firm in New Jersey. Um, we mask 18 applications in 14 weeks, which com was completed two weeks early and 40% under budget and provided the company with $20 million in data protection because of the cost associated with risk per record. So, um, you know, again, quick, quick savings on, on a pretty, uh, pretty easy and, and uh, uh, inexpensive project. Um, another large uh, company we work with in Ohio, this one is really impressive. We reduced the overall data footprint uh, 
from 5.6 terabytes to 645 gigabytes. With, so that's 88% reduction. And you can just imagine what that does to their storage costs, their, their staff uh, management. I mean, it really just cleans up the import, in, uh, performance and uh, reduces their risk greatly. And then finally, a major manufacturing firm in New York, uh, we improve their batch performance by, by 60%. And we have examples like this that we'd love to share with each and every one of you. Um, if you have any questions, you know, please give us a call. We can handle anything that you see here plus more. And um, we can probably share some examples of how we worked with companies in your similar field and uh, show and win. So um, again, thank you. We're having a bonus webinar for what's new in Optum. Uh, and Optum is an IBM solution that we work with a lot. It's a, it's a great solution that is done for archiving, app retirement, and test data management. Um, I suggest if, you, if you're an Optum customer, definitely check it out. If you haven't uh, seen what Optum can do, also check it out because it's a great tool. And again, you can really start on your way to a big data governance strategy. Um, again, thank you for attending and uh, we hope to hear from everyone soon.